Hey everyone, uh, I'm Dr. Priya Jagannathan, founder of Pivot to Thrive and Soul Designs, online business coach specializing in digital products with the power of AI. In this particular episode on Online Prosperity Show, I'm going to be sharing my journey from an Indian university lecturer to an Australian gambling call center support officer to an Australian university research grant management officer to how I landed in business coaching. This is the question I get a lot. And today, how I'm on a mission to help women become financially independent and business owners to get the support they need so that they can make money, time and freedom without the hassle and burnout. So do not miss this episode and watch till the end. We've got amazing bonuses coming as free courses access and Prosper will share all the details in the show notes below. I'm really excited for you to know the journey that I've been on. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. I'm your host, Prosper Tarawinga, and today we have an incredible guest with us. Priya, how are you doing today? I'm very well. Thank you, Prosper. How are you today? I'm doing fantastic. I think I'm doing better than most. But, um, you know, the reason why I'm doing better than most is because we have you on the show today. And for those that are watching the show for the very first time, welcome. This is the Online Prosperity Experience, where we bring you stories of people that are doing tremendously well in their own realm. Now, today we're bringing you uh, Dr. Priya Jagannathan. She's the founder of Pivot to Thrive and soul designs and uh, Priya specializes in pivoting marketing and sales strategies to make businesses thrive but that's not that's just the top of the iceberg that's not all she does if you go into her website you would notice she's got memberships and she also has a track record of making people create businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Now, Priya is on a mission to help busy parent entrepreneurs just like herself build simplified businesses um, and processes to find time, money, and freedom without the dreaded burnout. Now, it's quite an inspiring journey that she has taken. She didn't always start from business, but she's going to be telling us all about that. And we're about to uncover all those fascinating details. Now, Priya, you know what? I could go on and on because I've got an unfair advantage. We've spoken in the past and I'm enamored with your history and everything else that brought you to where you are today. But for our guest, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you actually got started with your business, Pivot to Thrive. Thank you so much for having me today, Prosper. Uh, it's really incredible how you get an opportunity to sit down and look back on your journey and why you do what you do. So I started my life as an academician. I used to be a university lecturer back in India. I was teaching for nine years. So the prefix DR is basically from my PhD in bioinformatics. So a lazy Indian girl who didn't want to wash petrol plates and test tubes wanted to just work in an air-conditioned room because I didn't want to sweat like this. <laughs> so, uh, you know, just working with algorithm and databases that was just me and uh, you know as a family it was a personal decision to move to Australia so I migrated in 2016 and my first job was with Bet365 so thrown at the deep end dealing with Australian punters uh, it was a huge culture shock but it was interesting I had a lot of Indian colleagues there that made me stay there for almost three years so my first job in Australia I was in the betting industry. Um, it was a call center role. And then when I was seconded for a leadership position with a six-figure paycheck, I'm like, I don't see myself in gambling. And Australian university has been my dream. So I moved to Adelaide. I found a job you know, with the University of Adelaide in the research grant management, um, really thrown at the deep end, dealing with all the fancy million-dollar Commonwealth grants, right from compliance to the entire life cycle. Uh, lots of learning, but I think kind of boring because looking at contracts in and out. And the reason why I was 
started looking for online businesses was because Australia has very, very late retirement age. So coming from India, which is 56, Australia is 66. And culturally, it's very different. People told me I have to save up for my own funeral. And I'm like, oh, my God, if I have to do that, I have to work till I die. So literally, my idea was how can I make money while I sleep? Not in a scammy way, but how can I make generate money without trading time for money? So I was doing a little bit of side hustle, but even that was in the um, you know, tutoring, academic help, anything in the education, because I thought that was what I'm qualified to do. And that's, that's what I know. So anything I can think of monetization was in the education sector. So basically, I came out of that little shell that I surrounded myself with, with the, the best $100 investment, which was the One Funnel Away Challenge by ClickFunnels. Russell Brunson is my best mentor. And that $100 basically gave me the idea that anything can be monetized. So that was the best investment in terms of my mindset shift, that anything can be monetized. Then I started investing in multiple courses, coaching tens of thousands of dollars. And based on one mission, how to make money while I sleep. Make, meaning how to get appointments while I sleep, how to get payments while I sleep. So basically, I've built my business based on this particular concept. So that's why I do what I do. Fantastic. What a journey. And uh, I'm really, really sorry we had to wake you up for this in, um, interview because obviously you really love making money while you <laughs> are sleeping. But now, could you now tell us a little bit more about what it is that you are doing in your business? You're not gambling anymore. You are No, not creating- at all. <laughs> <laughs> So basically, I like I said, I started with ClickFunnels and then I decided, especially Australia, having more than 95% small businesses, they do not have the funds to invest in a monthly recording subscription of a sales funnel. So looking at, you know, 300 Australian dollars every month. So though funnel and sales funnel is a beautiful concept, I just felt not every business is there at a stage where they need a sales funnel. So I kind of invested in social media marketing because we, without marketing and sales, people just have an expensive hobby, right? So when I was a side hustler, when I was working full time and had multiple online side hustles, this I had an expensive hobby because it wasn't making money, but it was just feeding my passion and I just felt happy. So I know what it is like to run, have an expensive hobby. So I felt if you're not doing the marketing right, if you don't have enough sales, then you just have an expensive hobby. So I kind of started niching down into marketing and sales, but I could not scale the social media marketing marketing model because I didn't have a team back then. So when I when I got more clients, when I couldn't have more, then I started to, you know, basically outsource it to uh, people on Upwork and Fiverr, and they didn't do a good job. So I couldn't scale that model. So I wanted something that I had more control over. And that's how I landed in business coaching. I'm more left brain logics and numbers than the feel good factor of life, life coaching and mindset coaching, I guess. So I'm always about return on investment. And that's how I kind kind of double down in business coaching. And uh, as you know, business coaching comes under a very, very broad umbrella. So I kind of tried different things and I understood based on my client results, what was my role in their success. So when they come to me, they're at point A and they want to be in point B. And what was the shortest, quickest, fastest way for them to get from point A to point B? I found out digital products. It was the power of digital products. Anything you you take a conventional brick and mortar business, when they value added with the power of digital products, they could fast track their success and get to where they want to be. So I kind of doubled down into digital products, meaning you want to start a course, even if you're doing your one-on-one coaching, how can you have and systems and processes in place where your clients can get your support without that one-on-one call with you, you know? So you don't have to be there on the call trading time, but your clients get the required support they need. So just bringing in the support resources and systems in a structured way to save you time and burnout. So digital products, you think of virtual summits, you think of webinar model, anything in the online space is what I call as digital products, especially with the power of AI. It's just become a no brainer these days. And another thing I think I added to the mix that is really, really like 10 X my client result is my VA Academy. So it's a great Um, I think USB for my business. This is how I stand out from the noisy, 
crowded, so-called saturated business coaching. So a lot of business coaches in the market who focus on, you know, um, cash flow, who focus on goal setting. Most of them focus on goal setting. I'm like, you can set goals, but if you don't have a roadmap and if you don't implement the roadmap, goals are just going to remain goals. You're not going to check them off. So it's kind of a win-win strategy that I have. So the reason, um, another main reason, one is my reason why I started was I wanted to make money while I sleep. And the other one, other reason, key reason is women who are equally qualified as me with their with PhD and who gave up because traditionally in India, a lot of women sacrifice their career after marriage, after they have children. The first thing they give up is their career and identity, right? So there are a lot of women who are equally qualified as me going through very, very toxic relationship um, and domestic violence just because they're not financially independent. So I wanted to help them get out of it but not many wanted to be helped. So uh, that was another interesting finding was not a lot of women want to help, but there are very few that really want to help, wanted that help to make money. So I started this, I started in 2021, December, when Australia shuts down, like literally December and January, uh, Australia shuts down, I needed work to keep me sane. So I just posted on Instagram story, uh, if you're an Indian uh, you know, mom uh, who wants to make money working with Australian clients, send me a DM, I'm going to teach you live. So I had six women sign up and I I taught them live for four weeks, all the things that I would need help with, like all my clients, they needed basic admin tasks, basic social media management, and all event managements and marketing. So everything I taught them live, and they got placed with lots of clients, then I started scaling that model whenever I can. So last month I launched and I got 12 new people into my container. So a lot of people still kind of drift off even from after joining my team. Um, but I still have a functional team of 16 VAs at the moment. I'm a, and I'm having another launch in December this year. So when I so it becomes more of a teamwork where I give them the strategy and roadmap. My client stays in the zone of genius. So they, they play with their strengths and my team basically implements the task for them so it becomes like a powerful teamwork and there's no excuse for the needle to not move so it's that particular adding VA to the mix has been transformational incredibly transformational absolutely and I can actually see the business model behind where you're supporting businesses with somebody um, you know behind them that is equally trained and is obviously going to be consistent in the work that they're doing such a difference especially in this day where we can allow remote working and um, also in the process you are helping those women um, you know create that financial future for themselves which exactly. liberates them from the violence that comes from uh, the lack of financial independence but you didn't take that route yourself when it came to financial independence. You actually left a six a figure paycheck when your business, you know, um, you you know, was sort of uh, getting started. Now, could you maybe share with us that pivotal moment with us that actually drove you to make that decision? Because so many people would think six figure paycheck. And you also did uh, put a reference that Australia has a late um retirement age yeah and you're taking the source of income from from your own well-being yeah I think um yeah it was a huge shift um and I think it was a timeline I had an urgency on the timeline and I was very unrealistic with my goal setting, to be honest, because I moved to Australia when I was 33. So in early 30s with two children, migration is really challenging. You would know it firsthand uh, doing that yourself. So I think I I, I wanted to retire by 40. So that was my uh, big goal. So 38, I was like, I have to track well. Uh, uh, I have, if I have to retire by 40 and the only thing is I wanted to live without regrets as an Indian girl you, I've always lived for others like my parents what they wanted my brothers what he wanted my husband what he wanted so looking back I don't think I did anything that I wanted to do for myself and after coming to Australia it's just opened up a world of opportunities there's no judgment right there's no career break I can do what I want I can pivot I can shift so I think that freedom kind of gave me the confidence that I have to try so if nothing works, I can always go back to a job, right? I told my I told my husband, just give me six months. If nothing works, I'll go back to a job. 
because I have that unique skill set for any Australian national university research grant management. So if I want, I can always go back to a job. So it was, but I came to Australia with a one-way ticket, you know? So I'm like, I'm not going to go back. I know that deep within me, but I had to give the man a little bit of, uh, you know, Levi. And I told him if it's not working, I can always go back. But the drive behind that was, I really wanted to live a life without regrets. And when I'm old, when I look back, I don't want to regret thinking I should have tried. Now I know I've went all in. I, I really put my best foot forward and there's no regrets. Absolutely. And it shows, I mean, if anyone just goes through the work that you've done or just listens to you speaking, they definitely know that you have, you know, walked the miles and in and, and those shoes and, um, you know, the evidence is there. But while we look at you transitioning and coming over to to Australia I mean at 33 your life would have been fully established in you know in India and so that literally meant leaving everything that you knew and also coming over here where you are sort of having to start in places where 16 year olds or 21 year olds prevalent you know what I mean like I would imagine working in some sort of a call center there will be young kids that are in there that are just also just getting started um, but it looks like you went on and did really well but I want to draw my um, you know question to what you left back home because when you were now here, your parents got sick and they contracted COVID and you wanted nothing but to be there for them. And uh, obviously this this is something that a lot of people that were born here would never attest because sometimes your parents are just the next suburb away or sometimes the next house away. But if your parents are that far away and you also then did mention during COVID, this is when you actually started a pivotal part of your business where you were now really helping all those other women to actually get started. Now, how did this experience really shape your perspective in money and in business? Because you were literally helping other people while you also needed help. Exactly. That's a very good question, Prosper. Thank you for asking. Um, I think in India, like you said, I had everything established, right? I, I had my first university job even before I graduated. So I think I'm, I'm blessed in that way. Like jobs have always been like easily. So I think that's why I could give up a job. I'm like, I can get a job any day. I think I'm overconfident that way. But uh, what I left in India was a whole identity I created for myself for 33 years which is very, very challenging. Like, you know, I, I, I had two kids, I had a house, I, I was a first home owner at the age of 24. So even because my dad built his house after he retired. So one thing he, he advised all of us get, because for Indians, home is an identity. It's not just a place to live, your home becomes an identity. So he asked us to create that identity early on. So when I got engaged, the first thing I did was go book a unit, which was 100% out of my loan. Um, so it was, it was a huge identity crisis that I had to go through. So that is one of my brand and pillars, what I teach in my business coaching is identity crisis, especially women in business go through identity crisis a lot. We wear multiple hats every day. And there's a bit of how much Australian should I be? How much Indian I should be in parenting? You know, I don't eat beef or pork for religious reasons, but I let my kids enjoy a bunning sausage, you know? So I do, I do Christmas celebrations. I do Easter head hunt because I want my kids to feel belonged in the community, in schools. So there's a lot of identity um, shift that happened that basically made that big move. Like you said, in 2020, when my parents caught the most virulent strain, I was checking boxes here. I, I bought a beautiful uh, 1920 built character home in Adelaide. Uh, you know, I would have bought like three or four cars by then. So what? that's like a perfect migrant life success right you come here you you buy houses you buy multiple cars and then you plan to buy the next investment property next car and then what next so that was what what struck me so as i'm checking boxes here i could not organize the next meal for my parents who were in india and there was literally no one to help. So I was like, my parents are not going to get any younger. So I have to find a way where I can go back, stay with them as long as I need, and that will not impact cash flow because I have a own family to feed. So I didn't want to go, you know, request my managers for holidays. I didn't want to request, or I didn't want any of these hurdles 
stopping me from traveling when I want. So that was the main thing. Online um, business really helped that because it's not like I can, I can I have to sit in this office. I can be sitting at home. I can be sitting in India. I can do this. So this year, I can say, out of, totally out of my comfort zone, I've done two overseas trips in the last two um, months. So I turned 40. Like I said, it was a big milestone. I wanted to celebrate. So my family and myself, we went to Japan for two weeks. I went with my girlfriends to Bali last week. And None of this would have been possible without the online business model and my virtual assistant team who take care of the workload while I'm away. So my clients are not affected. My work is not stopped. Everything is just as smooth as normal. So I think it that's the biggest pivotal moment, my parents getting covered, which pushed me to the maximum. I, I literally worked like 100 hours um, every week to get things done. So it was it was crazy. It was really crazy, but it was very rewarding. Absolutely. I mean, just ha- having to celebrate your birthday in two different continents, it's just something that a lot of people uh, envy and marvel about. Now, the business owners that you uh, work with are people that are ready. So you do mention that, you know, business owners who actually need a business coach are those that are ready to take the business to the next level. Now, could you maybe expand on the type of entrepreneurs who would actually benefit from, um, you know, working with, with you? Sure. So mostly I would say service-based business owners because I'm all about organic marketing. I strongly believe not a lot of small businesses have that chunk of money, thousands of dollars to spend on ads. And product-based businesses is very challenging with organic marketing. So I would definitely... um, I'm more skewed towards service-based business and coaches, consultants, and trainers have been my ideal clients, Um, especially business coaches. And that's why I say I don't compete with another business coach. I can value add and complement to these services because I don't think there are a lot of people in the market who do the kind of work that I do because most of the business coaches and consultants, they focus on business structure, they focus on goal settings, they focus on cash flows and projections. They don't focus on offers. So I call my strategy the power pivot strategy. So power is basically an acronym. Um, So P stands for product and pricing. So really getting clear with what you're selling and how much you're selling. Do you have a value ladder that serves multiple clients with multiple requirements and budget um, you know constraints as well so that's the pay O is organic lead generation organic marketing strategies and w is warm lead generation so you you're very uh, clear with the lead pipeline and sales pipeline so I'm all, I'm all about capturing the leads and having some strategies in place to nurture them to convert them into a warm lead most people don't even know this particular thing exists in their business it's completely inexistent so it could be as, as simple as just funneling them into a facebook group and posting every day to keep them engaged so when you have an offer you just throw that offer and you've got you know people really waiting to uh, buy your offers so the w is warm lead generation bringing systems and processes in place and e is evaluating the sales process in place you don't have to have an fancy sales funnel but do you have a booking link where people can actually book a call discuss with you what it is so it's a sales conversation how do you have that sales conversation do you have processes to follow up after a sales conversation how do you convert them and the last r is the key which is retainer income So I'm all about creating that regular retainer memberships and also retargeting existing clients. We always underestimate the trust people had when they took their card and actually swiped, right? So you'd have worked with them and you'd have solved the problem and then you'd have just let them go. But, you know, a new level is always a new devil. So when people move from point A to point B, they need the next level of support to move from point B to point C. Do you have an offer that retargets the people who have already in at point a to move them to point c so that's why creating that value ladder is very very important so you have things that can serve these clients so that's my power pivot strategy uh, which is a holistic 360 degree approach that looks at any business at any stages it could be idea to execution it could be a business struggling to make consistent income it could be a business that is making consistent income but struggling to scale so you look at any business these could be there could be gaps in any of these um, you know different aspects of business 
that will see money leaking through those gaps. So we uh, identify those gaps and come up with strategies, which could be simple strategies that they can execute to get what they want. Absolutely. And for somebody who spent three years, you know, making sure people gamble a lot, you're not allowing business people to gamble at all with their business because if they know exactly what product they're serving and at what price point, then they know they can plan ahead based on how many products do they need to sell to how many people in order to hit their goals. And if they are you know, generating those leads organically without them having to expend money on ads. That literally means the customer is not frustrated because when somebody comes through an ad, there's usually a frustration that then happens because that's probably not what they expected because the ads are usually written in a way that just wants to convert people immediately and you want to recuperate your ad spend there. So you are attracting people that want the right products and warm leads you know really make it easy for people to convert because if people know like and trust who you are it makes it super easy for people to actually engage and like you say some people would have bought from you in the past and they are now at another stage in their business and if you have the next product you know in your product ladder that actually creates a seamless way that people can um you know grow their business one thing that i like about this is I know one thing for a fact. If you're not going to ask people to buy, they're not going to make a purchase, you know, and you are actually making this seamless for the people that you're working with. And I really encourage whoever's watching right now to jump on and um, see what, what Priya has created. Now, just in case somebody who's watching is a startup business, can you maybe explain how your marketing membership can help them sort of navigate you know the challenging early years because I, I know you've got it all set up but you now also have a membership because you know you're taking people on a journey it's not just a once and done thing like you say every level has different um you know uh devils so how do they then you know in, inform their formidable years and actually establish a strong foundation using your membership so the membership basically I started for BNI members, to be honest. Um, as you know, I'm part of BNI and it'll be good for BNI members to get a taste of your work. So I always say your lowest ticket product, like the lowest priced offer should be packed with maximum value because who, the people who pay less would ask you a lot of questions, would be really, really intrigued with a lot of things. The more high ticket you sell, the less hassle it'll be, at, the, at, at least from my personal experience, that's how it has been. So the lowest ticket value should be the maximum jam pack value because that's like the top layer of your funnel and you want people to trickle through the next layers of your funnel. So the marketing membership, is basically a completely done for you offer. Again, it's mutually benefits because my team does the marketing for them. So I wanted to have the personal contacts. So the idea the membership is structured is the last Friday of every month, we get on a marketing roadmap call with the people who are signed up for the membership. And I discuss with them, just tell me what's your focus for the next four weeks. We don't look at their long-term strategies. We don't look at anything else. The next four weeks, are you selling an offer? Are you launching a retreat? Are you launching a course? Are you wanting to get more podcast interviews? What is your goal for the next four weeks? And we will channel the marketing message focusing on that one outcome. I always believe if you have one outcome, it's very crystal clear and you kind of double down into that one outcome. So four weeks, we will spend creating a content calendar based on different aspects. It could be personal branding, it could be case studies, it could be promotional content, different types of content, coming up with a strategic content calendar, three posts a week, uh, which makes it 12 posts. So my team will do the complete design, market research, content writing, copywriting, everything. And we share them in the form of a Notion file or a Google simple doc with a table, which will give them links to Canva, which gives them links to all the description. And the business owner basically looks at it, reviews it. If they have any correction, they comes back for correction. So they get three chances to come back with corrections back and forth. Once they approve it, they can actually you know schedule it on buffer or any scheduling app that they use and they can just have their marketing under control for the entire month by spending two hours in a month wow. so it's a basically an offer where they get to 
completely marketing is done and dusted in the first week of every month. Absolutely. And then they spend the rest of the time sleeping, right? <laughs> That's the idea. <laughs> See, now, a lot of business owners, they kind of start feeling overwhelmed because there's a lot to take in when it comes to running a business. I mean, you go from hiring new stuff, you know, the marketing, the sales and everything else that um, comes along with it. And there's a lot of decisions that need to be made. And you can, you know, understand that there's no one size fits all sort of approach to, um, you know, solving all these problems. Now, could you maybe tell us, um, you know, about the specially designed quiz that you have, which invites business owners to actually uh, take and so they can understand their specific needs and challenges better, which then makes it easy for you to then help them with whatever stage or level they actually are uh, that's on your website there. Um, so basically, I get on a call with them. I call it a discovery, business audit and discovery call. So the idea is to identify those gaps in all the five uh, different aspects of the business, like I said. So I want to power pack that session. After the session, I send them an email with all that we discussed. And also, I discuss on the call what offer would be be suitable for them if I mean I know an architect firm in Brisbane they had he had a complete team so I didn't want him to sign up for my mastermind because he had a team he was just not leveraging the team to do the marketing so we ended up having just a two three hour consult which I would train the team to do the marketing and they'll just do it so I kind of customize the offers based on the client requirement, not fix them into the fixed uh, offers that I've got. So my hero product is basically the mastermind and the mastermind is uh, the only focus of the mastermind is to come up with digital products. So that's it, plain and simple. So it's not a general business mastermind where you get motivated to run your business, accountability, mentoring, support, which is all there, but focusing on that one outcome, building your digital product. So in my current mastermind, I've got a fitness coach who is doing everyday like uh, PT, personal training, but she wants to st start an online program. So we've started a membership for her, uh, um, a low cost monthly membership where they'll get access to recorded video modules, but also get access to her live every month with a Zoom call. So I always want to incorporate that online live support a Q&A session otherwise people don't have accountability and mentoring so I don't sell digital courses course good information uh, but when I get stuck I get stuck you know so I always want to add that bit of accountability component in there that will give you that additional uh, touch points with your clients so you can move them to the next level of the funnel easily. So many people miss out on that. They just sell a course and then probably they'll do some email marketing. But when you don't have that personal connection, um, it's really challenging. Like for the monthly membership, I told you it's $197 a month, which is a no brainer. But I spend that one hour with them because that gives me an opportunity to sit down with them, understand what's their requirement and ideally know if they're ready for my mastermind. So I'd be like, I'm being honest, not selling you on a high ticket offer, but I believe that container would get you this outcome, what you want, because you have a team working for you full time, not just create 12 post. You know what I mean? So if I didn't have that touch point with them every month, I wouldn't know if they're ready for my next level. So really having that personalized conversations with them helps me understand which level of the funnel will suit them, what offer suits them best and get them the best results. Absolutely. And um, what would be the best way that people could actually get started, um, you know, working with you? Where would they go? So I have created a free course. That was my birthday giveaway. Uh, so it was, it's called a digital product mastery. So I've broken it down into three modules. Um, the basic being the introduction on who is an infopreneur. So infopreneur itself, how, like people, some people just don't understand, oh, I can't incorporate digital products. No, I cannot. So I just giving them that understanding that any business can be value added with digital products like, and every entrepreneur has a choice to become infopreneur. So I've literally explained with an example of a pineapple. Okay, a traditional businessman buys a pineapple from a wholesale, marks up the price, sells it at a retail price. That's a businessman. And an entrepreneur, it converts that pineapple into a 
smoothie or a juice that is readily consumable. So the problem is solved, right? You give them a value added product that's readily available. That's an entrepreneur and that's a, very, a little bit highly marked price than the businessman. Whereas an infopreneur teaches someone how to create a pineapple juicing business, how to increase the shelf life, how to have a pineapple juice product business. And that is like thousands of dollars. So anybody can tap into the knowledge-based industry. It's a billion dollar industry. It's growing rapidly. And so that's the first module where I cover about what is an infopreneur, how can a digital product add value to your business? And second thing I would have spoken about how AI can be used. So there's a six steps framework, how people can actually start from an idea to execution. And the last module is AI prompts. So I've given them a workbook with all the AI prompts they can plug and use to create a digital product. So it's a 57 minute webinar. Um, I've broken it down into 10 modules for to, into easily digestible bite-sized contents. And I've given them three different workbooks. So one is a social media content strategy workbook. And another one is an AI marketing chat GPT prompt workbook. And the other one is a course creation planner workbook so it's free absolutely no catch so if people just access those courses and get access to the three workbooks use it to the max they can start selling a course or a virtual product in three hours that's my promise if you take action in within 24 hours or even three hours if they're as fast as me they can create a product and start marketing they don't realize they have the most powerful weapon in the world today which is a smartphone and internet that's all you need to get started you don't need fancy funnels you don't need fancy tech you just have to tell people this is who i am this is what i can help and if you need this help come work with me that's it as simple as that Absolutely, absolutely. This has been phenomenal, uh, Priya. I mean, obviously, your life story, your journey, everything you've done and how you've put it all together using your expertise, the knowledge that you have and just who you are as a person. I think a lot of people should rally behind that. I'll make sure I put all the links um, to that um, um, mastermind and also links to the free course that you have just uh, alluded to in the show notes below okay now i just wanted us to go back a little bit Priya. you know let's just think of a time when you were 33 and you are sitting in that airport waiting for your flight to australia and let's just pretend the flight got delayed and uh throughout the the pa system uh some person would just come in with words of motivation just to keep you going on your journey what would you have wanted to hear um you know in that PA system when you were sitting there or what would you have wanted to have been told or have learned knowing what you know now about how you've uh, progressed in life? I think I would just trust the timing of universe. <laughs> I'm more, I, I think I bring a lot of spirituality context to business and that's why I started my second brand soul designs because I don't want to confuse my marketing core sales um, you know clients with spirituality but I surely would more uh, align with you know the thing that if it's meant to be it'll happen for me no matter what um, and if it doesn't happen it, it's just not meant to be so um, I think that would be that would be definitely my approach towards that. Absolutely, absolutely. And now that we've heard where you've been, what you're doing, what can our audience expect from you and the team at Pivot to Thrive or just Priya in general? Okay, the team the team really, really wants to take the burden off the business owner in terms of admin and marketing stuff. And my clients do appreciate the fact that working with my team back in India is helping a family. Okay, that's how they see it. it. It's an opportunity for them to make a woman financially independent also to make sure it's helping an entire family. So a lot of um, my VAs can work during Australian business hours for LinkedIn lead generation and things like that. You cannot work, um, you know, when it's Indian time. So there are some clients who don't care about the timeline. They can work at their own pace. So really they form a very, very beautiful relationship with the client, my clients and VA. And I see this growing and this is the unique proposition that I want to anchor myself in these niche. So it is 
helping my um, Australian and global clients get access to a trained resource where they're not spending time training the team member. They're already trained so they can get the ball rolling from day one. And my Indian VAs get working with global clients and, you know, become financially independent and have a good lifestyle. So it's a win-win for all of us. And me being in the middle kind of acts as the point of contact for both of them, taking complete responsibility for both parties. And that comes with a lot of pressure, as you can imagine, right? So the client is the one who pays me. I'm the one who pays my team. But still, it kind of gets my equal attention, respect and affection. So it is it is a lot of people management skills that I'm into these days and more coaching. Uh, but I guess that's the business model that I've, I've adapted, I've embraced, and I want to grow and scale that model. Absolutely. I can't thank you enough for the time that we spent on the call today. I think uh, I will get my team to get in touch with your team because I, I have a business idea that I think we can work together on Priya based on what you're creating and the amount of success you're going to be giving your clients, I'm thinking we should start selling beds. Oh, sorry, what? We should start selling beds. Beds? Yes, because your clients okay. are going to be making a lot of money while they sleep, so they're going to need <laughs> Okay. I was like, I'm, I was seriously looking at you. I'm like, okay, that's good <laughs> to make them gamble. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes yes i mean beds to lie on yeah 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 okay yeah yeah <laughs> they're oh, gonna be, okay they're gonna be making a lot of money while they sleep and i think sleep. that's a position that a lot of people want to be in so thank you so much uh priya for sharing with us your incredible journey and your insights with us today i think it's been an inspiring conversation and i'm sure our viewers have gained a valuable knowledge from your experience and from the expertise that they can garner from you based on what you've created thank you so much for having me it's it feels so nostalgic to look back uh, i don't think i've had a uh, you know a moment or an opportunity to reflect on certain things that it is this conversation has really brought that up and i feel thankful uh, for you because yeah it, it just makes me happy and validated that you've done well you know some some from another perspective you just get that reassurance that you've done well you're on the right track and you are changing lives and that's why everyone who's an entrepreneur is wanting to change lives and yeah you and I are no exception absolutely well you have my permission from when you're finished with this recording you can go back to sleep now and thank you so <laughs> I wish I came back to a full calendar after my holiday. So, <laughs> Absolutely. All right. And to our audience, I know you have gained a lot of value, um, you know, from uh, Priya's uh, conversation today. And if you're ready to take your business to the next level, find clarity and actually turn, um, you know, all those challenges that you're facing right now into full growth opportunities I think you are in the right place, um, you know, with Priya and P uh, Pivot to Thrive. Um, I will be putting all the links so that you can get connected with her in the show notes there. I want you to remember that success is a journey and we all have the power to pivot and thrive. Uh, the sleeping part is optional, but you can ask Priya all about that. Thank you so much for joining us on this um, online prosperity show episode. Until next time, stay prosperous. Bye for now.